ready to pray? We get started in probably about one more minute. Let's just worship for a minute. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings. I want to welcome everybody to <laughs> deliver me with deliver me from me. Um, 3 a.m. prayer is this is another a part of deliver me from me. And tonight um, we're focusing on praying um, about delivering yourself. There's a lot of prayer going on around the world, and my portion is to to teach deliverance uh, to bring healing to yourself. That a lot of times we can pray about a lot of different things, but a lot of times. We don't realize that we are our own worst enemy. And when you're your own worst enemy, you can we have a tendency to find fault in everybody else and we don't look at ourselves. And as I was asking God in what direction do he want me want me to focus on tonight? And he told me that he wants us to stop protecting our lives and face your fears. We got to stop protecting our lies. What is a lie? A lie is what you believe about you, what you believe about your situation, what you believe about what you feel, but it's not what God has told you about the situation. And a lot of times we go based on our feelings. We, ba we go based on what things look like, how we feel. And God saying that we got to begin to realize, is that the truth? A lot of times we looking at what we're dealing with and it's not God's truth. But it's our truth. It's our T-R-U-E, but it's not the T-R-U-T-H. And God is saying that this is a time that we got to be honest with ourselves. If you're going to be delivered, you got to be honest with yourself. And you got to begin to look at your situations. You got to look at you. You got to look at even how you think. Because a lot of times we saying blessings. We saying that we want, we want what God have for us. Blessings, blessings. We saying that we want what God has for us, but our thinking don't change. And a lot of times we get uh, um, we get frustrated and we get disappointed because we saying, Lord, how come I don't have what I want? How come I don't have what everybody else has? But not understanding if you're going to be delivered, you got to understand it's not in putting on, changing your hair, changing your clothes. It's going to come with changing your mind. You got to change your thought process. Blessings. We got to be willing to change how we see ourselves. The Bible says, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I want you to begin to think about how do you see yourself? Honestly, how do you see yourself? Because a lot of times we get in front of people and we look at ourselves like we all of this. I love myself when really you don't even like looking at yourself in the mirror. You don't even like taking care of yourself. You always find fault when you look at yourself. You always murmur. You always complain. We got to begin to understand we got a lot of deep rooted issues. And a lot of times we look for people to make us feel good about ourselves. And God saying blessings, it's only going to come from you. But you got to begin to deal with why do you feel the way that you feel? Even as I'm talking to you, listen to the worship and begin to open up yourself to Holy Spirit. Because even as I'm talking, that even he's been, he's going to begin to start dealing with our hearts. He's going to begin to reveal to us even our childhood, 
There were some names that people called us. There were some things, bad memories. Even it may be uh, what your mother, your father, whoever raised you. There were some things that were spoken over you and, and made you feel some kind of way. And, and see, the thing is, we thought because we have grown older, we feel like, Oh, I'm over and done with that. But guess what? You got an invisible scar in your mind. This is why I tell people a lot of times we are wounded in our minds and we don't realize it because it's an invisible wound. It's a wound in, in your soul. It's, it may have come from a betrayal. It may have come through a death, a divorce, um, a disappointment, rejection, bitterness. A lot of different times we deal with so many things. And if you don't have anybody to talk to, anybody to where well, you can just begin to say, you know what, I just feel some kind of way. I re I'm really not happy with my life. I'm really not happy with myself. And because you feel some kind of way, sometimes we grew up feeling like a failure because we feel like we didn't meet our goals. We may feel like, cause I don't have the house. I have reached a certain age. I wanted to be married by now and I'm not married. Um, I may want to be in my house and I don't have my house right now. Uh, I may be in a, a abusive relationship. I may be feeling lonely. I may feel like I don't have anybody, but see, these are a lot of lies that the enemy tries to tell us to try to make you feel like you, you, you're nothing because you don't meet the status quo based on what pe other people have. See, this is where we got to begin to really let God come in and begin to tell God, you know what, God, I need you to help me because see, a lot of times we've been mumming and complaining about our life and not understanding if God is going to help you, God is a spirit. He lives within you. And a lot of times we've been rejecting blessings. We've been rejecting the very person Who's going to heal us? Do you not know that God is a spirit and he lives on the inside of you? And by him living on the inside of you, guess what? Blessings. By him living on the inside of you and you, you say, I hate myself. I wish I would die. I feel like I'm going to commit suicide. You know, I'm afraid all this coronavirus, or I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. And a lot of times we speak a lot of curses. The Bible say in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life is in the power of your tongue. See, we got to begin to understand. We got to stop protecting our lives by saying we are okay and we're not Okay, we got to stop saying, um, um, I don't know how I'm, a, I'm I don't know how I'm gonna make it, but then you get around other people and you say, Oh, I know I got this. See, we got to be honest with ourselves and we got to begin to talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, I need help because even with the way that I think, the way that I see this world, the way that I see myself, the way that I see things that I'm dealing with in my life. Lord, I need you to help me. Even everything that I believe about myself, Lord, I need you to change. That's it. I need you to change the way that I think. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus. You say we're well, two or three are gathered together in your name. You said that you will be in the midst. And Father, we ask you to be in the midst tonight. Father, we ask you, oh God, to help your people. Oh Father, you say we call upon your name. You said that you will answer. Oh Father, we thank you that you are our a strong tower. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you are our uh, uh, you are Jehovah Shalom. You are our Prince of Peace. Oh God, you are our deliverer. Oh Lord, we thank you, oh God, for you being, Lord God, everything that we need you to be. God, we calling on you to be a deliverer. Oh Father, we ask you, oh God, for we cover the perimeters, the borders of our homes. Lord God, our apartments, wherever your people may be. Oh Father, we thank you that you cover with the blood of Jesus. Oh Father, we pray, oh God, that you begin to release your ministry spirits. Oh Father, we thank you right now, oh God, that we begin to call upon Jehovah Gabor. That God, we begin to call upon Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And Father, we thank you that you begin to release your healing virtue right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you will begin to touch your people. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that we silence the voices of the enemy. You got to begin to understand. A lot of times you think that you're thinking the way that you're thinking. You thinking that it's you. You got to understand. Excuse me.
You don't just have a voice, but the voice that you hear, you can hear God's voice, and you can hear the devil's voice, and you can hear your voice. You got to understand a lot of times when we're hearing negative voices saying that you can't do this, it's too hard, you might well lose your mind. You got to understand that's the voice of the devil. See, this is where now you got to begin to say, Lord, I need your help. I need you to help deliver me. What does deliver me mean? That means that he's going to pull your thoughts out of a place of darkness and he's going to bring you to a place of light. What is light? His word is light. It's where he's going to help you to be able to face your fears because it says here in uh, 2 Timothy verse 1 and 7. Let me pull that scripture up. It says here, for God did not give us the spirit of fear. You got to understand your thoughts are spiritual. Your words are spiritual. And so you got to understand when you begin to feel fear, you got to understand that this is a spirit that you have allowed to come in this house. And now you got to begin to give that spirit his eviction notice. God did not, according to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power. What is power? When God give you strength in your mind to face those things that you have been afraid of. You got to understand, God said, I need you to trust me. Trust me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. He said, all your ways acknowledge me. See, God is saying, I'm waiting on you to make me be. You got to begin to make him be. You got to begin to exalt him. God, I know I'm not by myself. God, even though I'm not married yet, but I know that you are my husband. Even though I don't know where I'm going to have the money to pay my bills, but I know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord that provides for me. Lord, I know that even father when I need help I need you to come help me Lord I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you are my strong tower you are my protector see this is where you begin to call on the Lord and say Lord I trust you see this is where you got to begin to confess your faults to the Lord come on begin to open up your mouth and begin to tell the Lord I need your help Lord I've been depending on man I've been depending on woman I've been depending on somebody to help me I've been depending on somebody else to pray for me but Lord I'm calling upon you tonight because I need you to deliver me. I need you to deliver my mind. Lord, come on. You got to begin to face, even though I hear God say, we got to take some things off the shelf. What, what do I mean? There are some things that happen to us that we that we overlook with some things that we don't want to deal with, some people who we don't want to face. Come on, let's begin to ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we asking you to bring to our remembrance the people who we put on the shelf, the situation we put on the shelf, the things Things that we say that we don't want to deal with. Holy Spirit, we take it off the shelf. Come on, some of it with our children. Some of what some things have happened to us. Well, we put it on the shelf. We bind and break that spirit of escape. Escape, we bind you in Jesus' name. We're going to face our fears. We're going to face what happened to us. We're going to face what people said to us. We're going to face how people disappointed us. We're going to break them lives of the enemy. Come on, no longer will I protect the lies. No longer will I protect that depression. No longer will I protect that spirit of fear. No longer will I protect that spirit of sickness and infirmity. Come on, no longer will I protect my insecurities. Come on here. We've been hiding. We've been know we've been insecure, but we don't want to say it. But you got to make up your mind and tell the devil today. I give you your eviction notice. Come on, where I've been hurting. Come on, I'm facing that spirit of pain. I'm not going to protect you no more. I'm going to stop lying, saying that I'm okay and I'm not okay. Come on, this is what you got to begin to tell the Lord. I am not okay. God, I need you to help me. Come on, when you begin to cry out, see, this is what's going on. We got to know how to push, and we got to begin to say, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me to face my fears. I need you to help me to let go. Help me to let go. Come on, God, say, you got to let go of those people that hurt you. You got to let go of those who disappoint you. He said, because we've been holding on, because he said, some of us are mad. Some of us are angry, and we got to let go. Let go of what you've been mad at. He said, you got to let them go. He said, because you got to understand forgiveness isn't for them, but forgiveness is for you. 
He said, because we've been holding on to what people did and how people made us feel. And God said, you got to stop, stop with the lies and face your fears. You got to begin to say, it hurt. It hurt me what they said. It hurt me what they did to me. It hurt me how they embarrassed me, how they pushed me down, how they belittled me in front of everybody. It hurt me how mama and daddy left me. It hurt me how my husband and wife treated me. Come on, you got to begin to own up to how you feel. Lord, I need you to help me. Come on, you got to get this stuff out your heart. God said, see, this is why some of us been feeling the chest pain. He said, because you got all these things in your heart and you ain't said nothing. Come on here. The Holy Ghost is in the room. He needs you to open up your mouth and you need to begin to let out your heart. Come on, well, you've been pretending. You've been pretending that you okay. You've been pretending because you've been trying to fight the good fight. I'm okay. I'm okay when you know you ain't okay. You know you don't like the situation that you in, but God said, I need you to cast your cares upon me. He said, because I care for you. Come on, you gotta begin to let this pain go. You gotta let it go. Come on, the person that hurt you, the person that molested you, the person that disappointed you, come on, you gotta let it go. You gotta stop going over. I see Holy Spirit said, we keep on remembering those things in the past. We remember things that happened to us 20 years ago. We keep remembering like it happened yesterday. And God said, I'm breaking these demonic cycles. He said, I'm breaking these time release curses. Come on, the same thing that happened to you last year is trying to come this year. I bind and break that spirit of depression. I bind and break that spirit of oppression. I break, I, I even see in the realm of the spirit, I break that spirit of hopelessness. I break that spirit of frustration and anger off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, begin to cry out. Come on, even man of God, Mr. James Green. I see the Lord. I even see that you have some pressure around your neck. I see like some pressure around your neck. And I bind and I break every spirit, every serpentine spirit, every spirit that's trying to suck the life out of you, that's trying to suck the life of God out of you, the pressures of life, the pressure that will try to overwhelm you. God said, I'm releasing my Ruach. He said, I'm releasing my Ruach of God upon you. I'm blowing my winds of change. Even that, even I cut your head off every spirit of python that's trying to take away your worship, that's trying to take away your relationship with God. But God say, this night, I'm blowing my breath upon you, man of God. He said, I'm giving you new strength. He said, I'm giving you a new revelation and a new understanding. He said, I'm taking you to a place in prayer that you ain't never been before. He said, I'm entering your room. He said, these things that have laid heavy on your heart. He said, I'm here. He said, give them to me. Those who have hurt you, those who have let you down. Even I hear, I see a woman. God said, let her go. He said, because it's a trap of the enemy where the enemy want to have you carrying what they did. But God said, cast your cares upon me. Even Chandra, I hear the Lord, Chandra Horace, I hear the Lord say, let it go. God said, even I'm bringing ropo so rabashi. Lay your hands on your heart. And God said, let it go. God said, begin to confess before me. Begin to confess your pains. There are some things that you got to confess. I break the assignment of the enemy. I break the assignment of the enemy, you spirit of infirmity, you spirit of the disease, where well, you will try to stop her. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, for you blowing the winds of change upon her in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you right now. Oh, God, that I come up against every spirit of heaviness. I come up against every spirit of oppression and suppression. I bind and break your powers in the name of Jesus. I break every shackle and I break every chain in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, I release the spirit of lib liberation. I release the spirit of freedom upon you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, let God say, I'm dealing with your heart. He said, I'm bringing some people before your mind. You got to let it go. He said, I'm going deep. I'm going deep. He said, I'm going deep even in some childhood issues. He said, I'm breaking words, words that's been spoken. I don't know who this for. I hear words, words, words in my ears. God said, I'm silencing the voices. He said, because some of us been living our life based off what people saying. God said, stop protecting these lies, trying to say I'm okay. And God said, you know you're not okay. Stop. Break the lies. What you mean break the lies? Just say, I break every lie that I've been believing. I break every lie that I've been protecting. Every situation, every circumstance, I break it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, say, declare and decree. I will not be moved. Come on, you got to tell the devil, I'm going to face you because God said tonight I'm releasing a supernatural power over you. He said, you got to begin to understand. You got to see yourself the way he sees you. He said, you're not the victim, but you are a victor. He said, I'm giving you the power and the ability. He said in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and power. God said, I'm releasing power in your mind. I'm giving you power in the way that you think. I'm giving you power in the way that you see things. I'm giving you power in the way that you talk. God said, we got to stop being afraid because I feel like some of y'all won't move. I break every restriction and I break every limitation off of you. He said, even when I see the enemy, where he had put a rope on your leg to only say you only gonna go so far. But God said, tonight I break the I break that leash. He said, I'm breaking chains off of you. In the name of Jesus. He said, I'm breaking the weights off of you. In the name of Jesus. He said, I'm dealing with your heart. I'm dealing with your mind. He said, let it go. He said, you're going to have to walk by faith. I even hear some of y'all say, I'm afraid. But God said, I'm here with you. He said, didn't I tell you that I'll never leave you nor forsake you? But I need you to believe. He said, I need you to deal with these thoughts that you have hearing. Come on, what you hearing coming to your mind? Some of y'all hear some of them words saying, don't you listen to her. That's that devil. Tell him to shut his mouth. So you got to know how to recognize demonic spirits. They speak to you in your mind. They speak to you in your thoughts. They don't want you to hear what the spirit of God is saying. No, you got to tell the devil, today is the day that I'm giving you your eviction notice. You got to get up out of this house. You got to go because you don't belong here. Come on here say, tonight I'm walking in my deliverance. God said, I got to reprogram your thinking. I released uh, uh, Romans 12 and 2. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on, we thank you. Holy Spirit has given us a grace. The Bible says he gives us new grace and mercy. God said, I'm giving you a grace and mercy for you to begin to get in that word and you got to believe. Come on, people of God, you got to believe. I break every lock off of your mouth in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and say, I'm coming out of this. Come on here because some people are in bondage. You're in you're in situations where you feel tired and you feel like I just need a change. And God said, I'm giving you the strength. I'm giving you the courage to break out and to break loose. He's I'm giving you the courage to walk away. But you gotta begin to know you gotta begin to trust him. You gotta understand God is not gonna pull your arm. God is gonna give you the strength for you to trust him at his word and for you to go and do what he called for you to do. God said we gotta stop running. You gotta stop running. God said you are running I bind and break up that spirit of the vagabond, running away from yourself, running away from your problems. God said, you got to deal with you. Come on, that's what deliver me is about. You got to face you. You got to face your ugliness. You got to face your nastiness. You got to face that I'm tore up to the floor. You got to begin to say, I'm going to face myself. God said, you got to stop running from you because you got to understand everywhere you go, you are going to that place and we're looking and we're mad at other people, but God said, because you don't want to deliver, you don't want to deal with you. He said, I'm breaking off that spirit of the fault finder of looking, you trying to find fault in other people. And God said, no, I want to deal with you. I want to deal with you. He said, they ain't your problem. He said, you are your problem. You got to get those spirits out of you. You got to command them spirits to get out of your room. Command that spirits of frustration, those spirits of disappointment, those spirits of hurt, those spirits of doubt and unbelief. Come on, because 
because we have been struggling. We have been struggling with our relationship with God. And God saying, I want to come in. I want to live in the house. He said, but you got to get rid of these other people, these other voices that you're listening to. You got to silence the other voices. You have to tell them, you got to go. You got to get out of my house. Come on, you got to fight. Sometimes we will fight for everybody else, but you won't fight for yourself. You'll fight for other people and pray for them. But God said, this is where deliver me from me is about. It's about you fighting for you. Come on, begin to break them shackles and break them chains off of you. Say, no longer. I break that spirit of the slave. I break that spirit of a slave mindset. Come on here. That don't want you to deal with your internal issues. We come up against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I pray for a divine focus. I thank you, Lord God, that we're able to see. I thank you that you're moving in spiritual cataracts from our eyes, that we thank you for the spirit of truth. We thank you for you uh, you enlighten our understanding that we will hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you begin to deal, Lord God, with that spiritual blockage. Father, we thank you that you begin to uproot them lies, lies that we told ourselves. We break off them words of saying that I can't. We break off them words of saying I'm frustrated. It's too hard. Lord, we repent right now in the name of Jesus for believing the lies of the enemy. Lord, we ask you to help us right now. Lord, you said that we call upon your name. You said that you would answer. And Father, we thank you that we're calling upon your name. Father, we thank you, oh God, there's no other name but the name of the Lord. And Father, we come up against, Lord God, these time release curses. We break these cycles in the name of Jesus. Well, we've been going around the side cycle. We've been doing the same thing. Oh, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you give us the courage. You give us the courage and you give us the strength in the ability, in the name of Jesus to move forward. Come on, we got to move forward in him. God said, this is the day where he's reprogramming your mind. You cannot go back to that old place. You can't go back to that old way of thinking. You can't go back to that old way of believing, thinking that God just going to make everything happen. God said, I gave you the strength. I gave you the strength to get well. I gave you the strength to go get your house. I gave you the strength to go get a car. I gave you the strength to go back to school. I gave you the strength to go get that job. He said, you got to stop with the excuses. He said, this is where you got to begin to face your fears. Come on, you got to get up and you got to speak to yourself and say, I can do it. Come on, even when it looks like you don't have the resources, you got to begin to say, it ain't going to always look like this. I'm just passing three. God said, open up your mouth and prophesy. Well, we sitting up here waiting on somebody to call our name. We waiting on the apostles and the prophets. And God said, you got to understand, do you not know the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead? It's the same spirit that lives within you. And God said, I'm waiting on you to open up your mouth. Do you not know death and life is in the power of your tongue? You got to open up your mouth to release life. You got to open up your mouth and say, my name is moving from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. That I prophesy they're going to call me for the job. The job is mine. You got to begin to open up your mouth and begin to speak what you don't see. You got to understand when you go to uh, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Because if you're going to stop protecting the lie and you're going to face your fears, you got to understand it's going to take faith. What is faith? Faith is what you don't see. But I want you to pay attention to verse 3. He said, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You got to understand we have been framing our worlds by what we speak. If God is a spirit, he framed the whole world by the spoken word. And you got to understand if we are his children, we speak our words into existence. So in other words, if you're dealing with something in your life, you dealing what you're dealing with because you've been speaking it. Oh, I ain't got no money. Child, I'm sick as a dog. I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is too hard for me. You got to listen at what we say. As a people, we have been cursing ourselves. And this is where we got to repent to the Lord. Lord, forgive me for what I've been speaking out my mouth. Forgive me for thinking that I can't do this. Forgive me, Lord for not even trusting you. Sometimes we have been going to church and we don't even believe God to deliver us. We don't even believe God to heal us. We want to go for the tangible things, for the house and the car and for money, but you don't believe God to heal your body. God said, I want to heal your mind. He said, I want you to be in good health and I want your soul to prosper. God said, I want to take you back to your childhood because some people are hunting with what happened to them at their childhood. Jesus said, I want you to take me there. 
Take me back to the place where what they did, what they did. Come on. You got to begin to face this thing. He said, take me to where they, where they raped you at. Take me where they molested you at. Take me to that place where they told you you were stupid. You, they told you you were dumb. They told you when nobody going to never want you. He said, take me to that place. Come on. Take the Holy Ghost. He's taking you to that. You got to, you got to allow him to go to that place. I know it hurts. I know it's pain, but guess what? You got to face it. You got to face it, woman of God. You got to face it, man of God, because I'm telling you, when you open up your mouth, you got to begin to tell the devil, you can't hold me. You got to begin to tell him, no longer will you keep me in a prison. No longer will you keep me stuck. No longer will you keep me where I won't say nothing. Come on here. I got a voice. Come on here. I got a voice and I'm going to say something. You got to begin to say, I am love. He loves me. He loves me regardless of what it looks like. I know he loves me. So you got to go back to them places because some of us have been living our lives based off of feelings, based off because you think somebody else's life better than yours and not understanding God loves you just like how he loves them. That's why God say, take me to that place. Take me to that place where they hurt you at. And when you take them to that place, begin to say, God, I give it to you. God, I surrender. I choose to forgive. I choose to let go. Come on. You got to understand that this is a place where you got to be intentional. Can I tell you true forgiveness? It's not based on you feeling because see in the black church, we'll say, I forgive you, but I never forget. That's not true forgiveness. The Bible say that when Jesus forgive us, he throws our sins into the sea of forgiveness and he don't remember anymore. And so you got to begin to understand we have to walk in that same position in faith, because if you're going to have a relationship with the Lord, you're going to have to walk in faith. And so you're going to have to say, I'm choosing to forgive the person that raped me I'm by faith, Lord. I'm choosing choosing to forgive my father because he walked out and left me. He took care of his other children, but didn't care, take care of me. I choose to forgive my mother because she's chose my sister, but she left me with my grandmother. Come on. You got to say, I choose to forgive her by faith. I forgive myself because I did some bad things that I'm ashamed of. And Lord, I forgive myself. So you got to open up your mouth. The Bible says you got to confess your faults. See, this is where we got to break off that spirit of pride where we've been so prideful, where we we don't want to say anything. We don't want nobody to think nothing is wrong with us. And this is why we don't see no power in our churches. This is why we don't see no real true deliverance because you got people. We're trying to put up images and we're trying to impress one another and all of us are hurting. And God saying, where are the people at? Jesus said, I didn't come for those that was well. He said, I came for those that were sick. Come on here. Where are you at? Are you sick? I don't know about you, but I told the Lord I need you to help me because this thing here been weighing heavy on my heart. God, I feel some kind of way. See, we got to begin to understand that's what a prayer life is. It's where you ain't um, coming with all these big words. You ain't coming with all these elaborate scriptures, but it's where you talking to your father. You're talking to your husband and you letting him know this is what's in my heart. I'm casting my cares. The Bible say cast your cares upon him. He said, because I care for you. See, I need you to open up your heart because if the Holy Ghost begin to tell me, I want you to pray with my people what my people can be delivered. Don't you sit up here and just watch me and don't be delivered. Don't you sit up here and watch me and not open up your mouth and say, God, I need you to help me. Come on here. He said, because I don't want them by themselves. I want you to coach them through it. He said, because when you begin to coach yourself, when you begin to walk in strength and you begin to walk in deliverance, he said, you got to understand I'm giving you the strength and nobility to whoop these things that you're dealing with. And when you whoop it now, you can go back and help other people. See, this is where we got to stop being selfish. Well, we got to stop when I want to be the superstar. I want to be the only one. The days of that is over with. This is the days and the age of the church where God God said, I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh and my sons and daughters will prophesy. See, this is where we got to begin to get healed and we got to begin. He said, you got to, what Jesus told the man, he said, pick up your bed and walk. See, you got to pick up your situation and tell it you can't hold me. You got to begin to open up your mouth and fight for your deliverance. See, we've been feeling, I ain't, I don't feel important. Come on. I feel like, you know what, they, they, they got more followers than me or, or they more popular than me. God said, but I call you. I got a purpose for you. Come on here. Tell that devil, shut your mouth. I come up against that spirit of competition. I come up against every spirit of envy. I come up against every spirit.
spirit of jealousy that want to have us being in competition in the body. I break its power in the name of Jesus. I release the spirit of unity. I release the spirit. That you said how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That I am my brothers and my sisters keeper. Father, I thank you that we're praying for one another. You say iron sharpen iron. Father, I thank you for you releasing your healing virtue. Oh, Father, I thank you, oh God, for you healing, for you healing broken hearts, for Father, for you healing wounded hearts where people being wounded and people being hurt. Oh, Father, we pull them daggers out of people back where they have been backstabbing. We bind and break every backstabbing spirit. We call you out in the name of Jesus. You spirit of hurt, you spirit of pain and disappointment. Come on, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. A lot of times we got these things working on the inside of us and we want to why are people doing this to us? Because we got these spirits in us or they came to us through our bloodline. So you got to begin to recognize and call this stuff out of you. Come on here. You may not be the, 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 the one that betrayed, but you know, it's like, why this keep happening to me? You got to cast this stuff out of you because you got to understand a lot of times spirit don't come in by what we did. Sometimes it came in because of what our family members and ancestors and forefathers have did. See, that's when you're getting into these generational curses and God says, see, you got to open up your mouth. We break off that spirit of laziness. How come I got to do all this praying? How come I got to do it? Because God saying somebody got to do it. The Bible says in John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. And you got to understand if you're going to be a child of God, you got to give. You got to begin to pray for your, 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 your future generation. You got to pray for your family member. Pray for your children. Come on. you. This is what we got to begin to cry out and say, God, it's me. I need you to deliver me. Come on here. Deliver Deliverance is just about you throwing up in a trash can. It's about what God said. I'm shining the light of the Holy Spirit on your mind. I'm shining the light of the Holy Spirit where your mind been in darkness. He said, but come on here, that spirit of hatred. I hear the Holy Ghost say, I'm dealing with that spirit of hatred. Come on here because somebody been dealing with resentment and hatred and God said, let them go. He said, let them go. You got to stop playing over in your mind what they did. You got to stop sitting up here. He said, because you'll make yourself all upset. Do you not know when you begin to hate somebody and you get so angry with them? Do you not know that that person is controlling you? Do you not know that you're giving your energy to that person? Because when you see them, they make you feel some kind of way. And God saying, why are you giving them your energy? He said, why you you bringing, you bringing demonic spirits and you drawing demonic activity to your body? He said, because the Bible said, but be angry, but sin not. We begin to sin when we begin to want bad things to happen to people. And God said, I got to deal with that spirit of murder. He said, because you, you ain't physically murdered them, but you murdered them in your mind. You murdered them in your thoughts. And God said, this is where we got to repent. See, we got to stop hiding because see, we've been hiding this stuff and we think don't nobody see, but you got to know that God said it's high and he looked down low and you got to understand we, you wonder why you got ailments in your body. The ailment comes from the, cause the things that you've been thinking in your mind about your brothers and sisters. God said, it's time for us to repent. He said, stop protecting your life. Stop protecting like ain't nothing wrong with you. Stop protecting like you don't need no prayer. You can't say, now nah, I don't have nobody to pray with me. God said, I got somebody to pray with you. And you still want to sit up here and try to find fault. I come up against every fault finding spirit that want to find fault and that want to, you, you, you spirit of the judge, that, that spirit of the accuser of the brethren, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that we silence your voice and we uproot you and we command you to get out. We take authority over you. We come up against every spirit. Rejection. Rejection. Don't nobody like me. Don't nobody want to talk to me. Don't nobody want to be my friend. We bind up the spirit of rejection. Every spirit of self-rejection. Rejection that came in when you was in your mother's womb. I call you out. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come up against you. God said, you've been sabotaging your relationships because of your re rejection. He said, I sent genuine people in your life to help you. Genuine people in your life to love you. He said, because you keep looking at them like they're going to hurt you. And God said, you got to begin. He said, I call out the rejection. I call it out of you. I call it out of you. Get out right now in the name of Jesus. I call out that spirit of rejection. He said, even keep on, you keep on saying, they don't like me. And, and, and you can 
comparing. Stop comparing yourself to other people. God said, I made you the way that I wanted you to be. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Stop trying to copy like how other people are. God said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said, even I'm re-imaging you. Thank you, Lord, for you re-imaging. He said in Genesis that he created us to walk in the likeness and image. Father, I thank you that you are re-imaging our mind. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're releasing healing to our mind. Father, I thank you even to healing to our subconscious mind. Uh, Father, even things, oh Father, that happened to us that we forgot about. Things, oh Father, that happened to us that we don't want to talk about. Father, we thank you that you're giving your people the grace and you're giving them the strength to, Father, to deal with these issues. Oh Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for you breaking the power of darkness. Oh Father, we we come up against every every spirit, oh Father, of, of, of feeling like an orphan, feeling like you don't belong. I bind and break every spirit of the orphan feeling like wherever you go you don't nobody like you you always you i'm always by myself god i break off that mindset of feeling and i break off abandonment every spirit of abandonment i command it to come out i command it to get out right now in the name of jesus god said i call you to be an original come on here he said stop sitting up here talking about don't nobody want to be with you he said you got to understand you the reason nobody don't want to be with you because that's what you're saying. He says, so is a man thinking in his heart. In other words, so is a man thinking in his mind. So is he. He said, you're getting what you're thinking. You got to stop thinking what you're, you got to stop doing what you're doing. He said, you are drawing negative activity to you because of what you are thinking. He said, even some of you, you all, you got to repent. If the, some of the, I, he even showing me, um, like say for instance, if your mother had a heart attack at 20 and at 20 years old, you start having heart problems. We break these generational anniversary periods, things that happened to our ancestors and forefathers when they hit a certain age that certain things happen to them that's trying to happen to us. We bind it and we break it. Father, we repent on behalf of our ancestors and forefathers in the name of Jesus. Father, we come up against every spirit of high blood pressure, every spirit of diabetes. Father, we come up against them genetic markers. We come up against them genetic uh, patterns in the name of Jesus. My, this happened to my my mama had a miscarriage, so now I had a miscarriage. I break them uh, demonic assignments in the name of Jesus. We come up against every demonic initiation. We come up against every covenant uh, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we come up against those programs. Programs, oh Father, of being dysfunctional, of, of, of learning, of doing the same thing what we've seen our parents do. That spirit of insanity, saying that we want different, but we do the same thing. Father, we ask you to open up our eyes that we we will begin to see the truth. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you give us the courage that we begin to do differently from our parents. Oh, Father, we come up against them ancient demons. Them, them demons, even God said, even in your dreams, we come up against them ancient dreams that you always see grandmama or you always see yourself at old grandmama house and that house ain't even in existence. You see yourself back as a little child and you're an adult. You got to understand that those are spirit of setback. I come up against every spirit of setback that that want to set you back, that want you to go back to an old mindset, that want you to go back to an old way of looking at things, an old way of doing things. I come up against those vicious cycles, those familiar spirits right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you that we begin to lay our minds on the altar of the Lord. And Father, we put, Lord God, every situation on the altar. Come on. He said, cast your cares upon me. He said, because I'm releasing to you downloads. He said, I'm releasing downloads. He said, I'm clearing your thought process. I'm clearing your mind. He said, I'm giving you the power and the ability to face what you need to face. He said, I'm breaking the, even the pressure that's been on your mind, the pressure that's been around your head. He said, even though that person has been battling with my Whoever been dealing with migraine headaches, God said, Yada my shata. He said, I'm breaking every spirit. I see like a snake wrapped around your head. I break the pressure. I break the tension in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on your head and we break it right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 
God said, this is the time for us to go forward. Come on here, Rabbi. You got to start prophesying. God said, open up your mouth and speak. You don't have to wait till the prophet call your name. You got the prophet of Jesus on the inside of you. Open up your mouth and say, I'm coming out of this. Come on, open up your mouth and say, all my needs are being met. Come on, regardless of what it looks like. God, I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the one that takes care of me. You are the one that supply my needs. Come on here. I would not be frustrated. I would not be disappointed. Come on here. You got to open up your mouth. Yeah, now by shot. Come on. I break off them headaches off of you, Robin. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I come up against every spirit of, uh, of stress, every spirit of pressure and worryation. I come and I bind and break your powers off of her. Right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you God, for your hand being upon her. Right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, oh God, for breaking the powers of addiction. Oh, Father, I thank you right now for giving your people. Lord God, giving us the courage to face our issues, to face our fears. You said that you have given us the power, Lord God, to face our fears. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Where even what people, oh Lord God, are trying to use drugs and alcohol alcohol to numb the sound of these voices. Oh, Father, we, we, we bind it right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you are the miracle worker. You are the deliverer. We send the Holy Ghost, oh Father, to that person that's on drugs, to that person, oh God, that's on the streets. Oh, Father, we thank you right now, oh God, that they will begin to encounter you. We thank you for releasing angels of deliverance, angels of power. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, oh Father, that you begin to take the taste out of their mouth. Oh, Oh, Father, that you begin to heal the pain that even the, the, where they trying to numb the pain and the things what they've been seeing in their mind. Oh, Father, we ask you to release healing to their mind and their subconscious mind. Oh, Father, we pray right now that you begin to deliver them. Oh, Father, that you begin to deal, Lord God, with the sexual abuse, the mental abuse. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you will begin to cause healing to take place. Oh, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, that we call out that spirit of perversion, that spirit of sexual perversion, where people have a desire, oh Father, to desire other people's spouses. We come up against every marriage breaking spirit. We come up against every spirit of pedophilia. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for you releasing deliverance. We thank you that you heal that hurt little boy, that you begin to heal that hurt little girl on the inside, those that's been struggling, those, oh Father, that's been struggling with their sexuality. Oh Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. We thank you that you begin to heal your people. Oh, Father, that we begin to call upon your name. You said that we call upon your name, that you will answer. Oh, Father, we thank you that you will begin to strengthen your people, that you will begin to strengthen our spiritual man. Father, we thank you that you begin to enlarge our capacity to receive you. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you begin to strengthen us. You said that your strength is being made perfected in our weakness. And Father, that we call upon you tonight because we're weak. Oh, Father, we calling upon you because we're not satisfied with our life. Oh, Father, we calling upon you because we need your grace and your mercy. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, because you are the one who can help us. You are the only one who can deliver us. Oh, Father, we repent, oh God, for looking to man and woman. We tear down these idols where we have made people our idols and we tuck our eyes off of you. But Father, we repent right now. Come on, Father, we repent for what we've been saying. Lord, we repent, Lord God, for mumming and complaining. We repent, oh God, because we didn't look to you. We were looking for man and and not look to you. Oh, Father, we ask you to help us, oh God. We pray and we cry out for mercy. We ask you, oh God, that you begin to heal our bodies. Oh, Father, we thank you that you begin to go to the hospital. We speak death to that coronavirus. We speak death in the name of Jesus to it right now. Father, we thank you that we begin to overturn it. We thank you, oh God, for you releasing your miraculous healing power in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for a speed of recovery, a speed of healing. Father, we thank you that you begin to blow your ruach in these people long we pray, oh God, for those that's been having respiratory problems, that Father, that we begin to pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and break up every spirit of pneumonia. We come up against every spirit of a respiratory attack. 
We bind it right now in Jesus' name. We come up against that spirit of fear because sometimes some respiratory problems come from fear. Come on here. You got to begin to face your fear. Tell the devil you're a liar. We bind it. We take authority over every spirit of pain. We come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of uh, 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 pain and every spirit of fear. We command you to go. We come up against every spirit of anxiety. Every spirit of feeling nervous and anxiousness. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We begin to release the spirit of shalom, Lord, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Oh, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for your hand being upon your people. Oh, Father, we thank you right now that you're going to the hospitals. You're going into every room. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you're being glorified. Oh, Father, we lift you up because you are the healer. Oh, Father, we lift up every nurse, every doctor. To every person that works in the hospitals, that working in grocery stores and gas stations, people that are on the front line, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that you're raising up a people, that they will see the glory of the Lord being manifested. We thank you, oh God, for holy invasions. We thank you, oh God, that your people, Lord God, begin to feel your presence. They begin to feel your power like never before. We thank right now, oh God, that you begin to cause people, well, Lord God, to be hungry for you. Oh Father, we thank you that you change our spiritual appetite. We repent for having the world an appetite. We repent for wanting the things of the world. We repent for wanting to look like the world, wanting to act like the world, and not wanting you. Forgive us, oh God, for being a user. Forgive us for being a manipulator. Forgive us, oh God, for being jealousy, envy, and backbiting. Forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, for having competition over one another. Oh, Father, we begin to cry out right now in the name of Jesus, saying, Lord, it's me. It's me standing in the need of prayer. Oh, Father, forgive me, oh God, for I hated my life. Forgive me, Lord, that I want to take my own life. Oh God, forgive me for feeling the pressures of the life. I come up against every spirit of oppression, depression, and suppression. Right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we thank you right now that you begin to heal us, oh God. Heal us with your healing power. Heal us right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and break every spirit of struggling. We come up, we bind and break your power. Right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for releasing the spirit of liberation. We thank you for releasing the fire of God. We release a holy fire in every hospital. A holy fire in every every home and every apartment where people are sick. We thank you that they begin to experience the fire of God. We thank you, oh God, that you're doing miraculous miracles. We thank you that we break every fever. We break every temperature. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare and decree that your people shall live and not die. We come up against every spirit of pride. Oh, I don't need no help. Ain't nothing wrong with me, devil. You're a liar. We bind and we break your power. Right now, in the name of Jesus, oh Father, forgive us. Forgive us, oh God, for saying Ain't nothing wrong with me. Forgive us, oh God, for not reading. Forgive us for not praying. Forgive us for not seeking you. Forgive us, oh God, for wanting somebody to do it and we don't try to seek you for ourselves. Forgive us, oh God, for we putting a man or woman above you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, oh God, when we've been putting materialistic things ahead of our relationship with you. Come on, we, we got we to gotta begin to cry out and we got to begin to repent. We got to begin to say, Lord, have mercy upon us for Father, for we have been prideful. Have mercy upon us, oh God, for we We've been selfish. Have mercy, oh God, for we've been worshiping other gods. For Father, we've been looking at other gods. Father, we've been doing what the world wants us to do and not doing what you call and ordain for us to do. Forgive us, oh Father, for having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Forgive us, oh God, for being religious and legalistic. Forgive us, oh God, that we want to do everything in the church, but we don't want to do nothing for the kingdom. That Father, that we don't even know who you are. Forgive us, oh God, for being legalistic in our mind. Forgive us, oh God, for not wanting a relationship. Father, we ask you, oh God, to have mercy. Father, teach us how to have a relationship with you. Father, open up our eyes and begin to let us see. Let us see the truth. We break off the lies. We break off the deception. Well, we've been in deception. Father, we ask you to deal with the hurt. Deal with the pain in the name of Jesus. Well, we've been stuck with our false perception. Well, we've been seeing things the way that we want to see it. Not the way that you see it. But Father, the only way we see it because we is broke, busted, and disgusted. And Father, we don't see it through your eyes. Have mercy upon us, oh God, that we need your help. Oh, Father, open up our eyes that we 
we can see things the way you see it. Help us to see that we are already out. Help us to see, oh God, that you already gave us the strength and the ability to go through. Help us to understand, oh Father, that this thing can't break us. Help us to understand, oh Father, that the power of the greater one is on the inside of us. Help us right now in the name of Jesus that we begin to call upon your name. That Father, we ask you to help us, oh God. Come on, call out, God, I need you to help us. Help us right now, oh God, that we're crying out, oh God, for you to begin to do a work on the inside. Come on, you got to understand that God, he works within you. Come on here, he want to change the way that you see things. He want to change the way that you hear things. He want to change the way that you live. He wants you to change the way that you talk. Come on here, God said, you got to stop with these vicious cycles. He said, some of us are with are in relationships that he never called us to be in. He said, then you cry out and say, God, I want my life to be changed. He said, but you connect and you tied to the wrong people. God said, when I tell you to let them go, you let them go. He said, you have made these people your God. Come on here. God, I need you to help me. Come on, God, help me to let them go. God, help me to let them go. I know that they ain't no good for me. I know that they ain't treat me right. Father, help me to go about my business. Father, help me lead me and guide me in the way that you want me to go. God, I need you to have mercy upon my soul. Have mercy, oh God, because I'm crying out, because I need you to help me. Come on here. Ask him, have mercy. Come on, when the last time you cried out, because see, a lot of times we just say, oh, Lord, just help me. No, you got to be desperate. You got to be hungry. You got to begin to say, God, if you don't do it, it won't be done. God, I need you to fix me. Change the way that I'm, change the way that I'm doing. Everything that I put my hand to, it crumble. I come up against that spirit of destruction. Everything that you took you tell, oh God, help us right now in the name of Jesus. Well, we've been struggling in our lives. And God said, I need you to cry out to me and say, God is me. Come on, stop pointing your finger at other people and say, I need you to help me, Lord, because I'm struggling. I'm struggling with my thinking. I'm struggling with trying to do right. Lord, I need you to help me because it's like I'm tired of this heaviness. Come on, command that pressure to come off of you. God, I need you to have mercy. Have mercy upon my soul. Lord, I know I've been doing wrong, but God, I need you to help me. See, this is what you got to begin to say, Lord, it, I, it's been me. It's been me. I know I ain't been doing right, but I need you to forgive me. I ask you, don't take your Holy Ghost away from me. Oh God, I'm crying out because I need you to deliver me. Deliver me with your power. Come on here. You don't. You got to understand God can deliver you and you don't have to feel nothing. God can deliver you, but he just needs for you to believe. Come on, this is where you got to begin to cry out and say, God, I need you to have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Come on, say, God, I'm tired and I'm frustrated. I can't keep going around these same cycles. God, I need you to give me the courage and give me the strength. Come on, begin to say, God, I believe you. I walk by faith and not by sight. Come on here. I walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Open up your mouth and begin to speak this word. You got to begin to speak the word. Come on, see, God say, this is the season where I ain't going to baby. I ain't going to baby you. This is going to be the season if you want me. You got to cry out. Why you think I'm doing this in the middle of the night? Because this is when the devil throw his seeds. This is when the devil put things in the dreams. This is when the witches and the warlocks, where they get with people and people can't go to sleep and people can't rest, but people will sit down and watch TV, but you won't get up and pray. And God say, get up and pray. Get up and say, God, I need you to help me. Have mercy upon my soul, because God, I'm struggling. I need you to change my mindset. Change the way that I think. Change the way that I perceive things. Change the way that I see you. God, help me right now, because you ain't in there. God, I ain't looking at man, but I'm looking unto you, oh Lord, that even regardless of what it looked like, for your word said that everything is going down but your word. For you said in Jeremiah 1 and 12, that, that you watch us to perform the words that you speak. And I'm speaking your word. Come on here. You got to speak his word. God didn't say, tell me all about your problems. Once you tell him what your problems are, now you tell him what his words say. Come on here. You got to open up your mouth and tell him what his word. By your stripes, I am healed. I'm the healer of the Lord. Come on here. Come on, uh, Minister Renee. I'm the healer of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for healing my body. I rebuke you, spirit of infirmity. I rebuke you, spirit of disease. Come on, tell that devil. I'm walking in my authority. Do you not know that God has given you jurisdiction of authority? 
authority. You have to tell your body. If your body won't listen to you, you got to tell your body, I'm, I, I, I take, I'm on, I own you. Come on here, your body's like an unruly child. You got to begin to tell that body, you're going to listen to the word of the Father. You're going to listen to him. And I'm speaking his word. Do you not understand as you begin to pray the word of God? You got to understand. The Bible says the earth is moaning and groaning for the sons of God to manifest. How's the sons of God manifest? Because you're speaking what you don't see, regardless of what it looks like. I dare you to say, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this situation. I'm coming out of this circumstance. I will not be denied. I will not be denied. Come on here, I tell the devil, I overturn. I overturn every assignment of the enemy. I overturn every plot of the enemy. I declare and decree that it will not work. No weapon formed against me. It shall not prosper. It may be formed. But it will not prosper. You got to tell the devil, I will not die. I will not die. But I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to speak the word of the Lord. Say, this too shall pass. Say, God already working it out. He already turning it around. He already sending people to help me. Come on here. I dare you to speak it. And I dare you to believe it. Because what you speak and what you believe, you're giving heaven permission to release it unto you. And God said, this is why you got to open up your mouth and you got to begin to say something. You got to speak the word of God. God don't heard our mom and complaining. He don't heard your mom and complaining. You got to give him back his word. Do you not know with this relationship with God, it has to look like you're failing. It has to look like you struggling. It has to look like you're not going to make it. It has to look that way. Apostle, where you get that from? Matthew 27. I've been there all week. Jesus, it had to look like Jesus. It was over with for Jesus. They beat him. They killed, killed him. It had to look that way. But you had to understand, just like how he got up, you got to know that you're going to get up. But you got to understand that you got, if you're going to carry the name of a child of God, you got to go through some things. I'm going to say that again. You got to go through some things. This is the season to stop thinking that you're going to be a child of God and you don't have to go through nothing. You might have, If you don't want to go through nothing, you're on the wrong team. He say, those that suffer with me, then those are the ones that's going to reign with me. You got to learn to go through suffering. You got to say, God, grace me to go through this. Grace me that I don't like it. It don't feel good, but grace me to go through this. You got to tell yourself, I'm going to make it. See, you're prophesying. I don't care if you got to say this 10 times, but keep speaking the word. I'm going to make it. Now one of my bills should get cut off. All my needs are being met because he's saying you got to deal you got to stop protecting the lies and face your fears. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, oh, Lord, I don't know how the Lord. You're giving away, uh, you, you, you're calling demonic spirits to your household. You got to begin to understand. That's right, Minister Keisha. We got to be spiritually mature. We got to understand you got to speak God's word. That's our only hope. Because if you don't speak his word, the Bible say he can't do it unless you speak his word. So we got to begin to say, God, I thank you. You got to speak it as if it's already done. That's what faith is. I'm coming out of this. I'm moving out of this. You got to speak it and you got to go through it. That's right, woman of God. Stop thinking God going to pick you up and take you out of it. He going to take you through of it. You got to understand you stronger than what you really are. You think you can't do it. Yes, you can. Stop saying you can't do it. Yes, you can do it. And you got to remember, Jesus lives within you. You got to tell yourself, I'm going to make it and I'm not by myself. This is why you take the time to go through deliverance, because the more that you're being delivered, the more easy it is that you're going to trust the Lord. But it's hard to trust the Lord if you're wounded. Because you're, when you're wounded, you're going to base everything on your flesh. Can I tell you, I can be going through things in the natural, but I'm speaking, God, you shall supply all my needs. I will not let this kill me. I will not let this destroy me. I will not lose my mind. I got to speak what I don't see. And this is why we got a lot of saints 
They missing God because they doing all this hollering and screaming, but you ain't speaking the word. That's right. We got to change our mindset. Do you not know God? The Bible say God told Satan, why don't you try my servant Job? Do you not know God is allowing us to go through this? Because he wants you, he want to know, do you really trust him? Do you really believe him? See, it's easy to believe God when everything is good, but can you believe him when you're going through the test? Can you see in the natural when children are taking a test, do the teacher talk? No. So while we're going through this test, you don't hear him saying a lot because you got to go through the test. He already prepared you on what you need to do. He said, you got to speak my word. Speak the word of God. You may say, I don't know what the word is. Get in the Bible. God began to show me we can't go back when church is open back up. You can't go back to that old mindset. Looking for the people to tell you it, looking for the pastor to tell you everything. God said, I'm allowing this because my people got to get in my word and they got to know me for themselves. See, you can't, it ain't going to, it ain't going to work with you knowing God, knowing what your pastor say. No, you got to know God for yourself because see now ain't nobody going to no churches. You got to know God for yourself and you got to know how to speak God word for yourself. This is why you got to get to know God. That's why God said you got to reprogram your mind and you got to face your fears. You got to face this ugliness. You got to face this nastiness and you got to prophesy. I'm going to make it because God is with me. You got to get you some scriptures and you write down, get you four or five scriptures on fear, get you four or five scriptures on faith. And that's what you speak. Whenever you start getting weary, I'm speaking what God's word says, because he's saying the Bible is a book of spiritual laws. You got to understand when you break the spiritual laws, you're opening up the door for the devil to come in. But when you open up your mouth and you speak the word of God, you tell him what his word said. He said, can, he said, he said in Isaiah I think it's 43. He said, give me no rest. In other words, he said, keep telling me what my word says. You got to get to a place that you believe his word over what you see. Come on, child of God. You believing in a man that he came here on earth. He died and he rose with all power in his hand. And if he lives on the inside of you, where your power at? This is the season for us to walk in power and authority as believers. It ain't, I just told you, it ain't just for the preachers. It's for you too. You got to walk in power and you got to walk in authority. And so, and that's why God's saying we got to deal with our issues. This is why you saying, God, work on me. This is why we got to repent. Because we have been, we've been lazy and we've been wanting everything to come from the pastor and we haven't been pursuing God. God lives in you. This is the church, not the church building that we go to. This is the church. You got to learn to respect the church that he lives in. Give, he say, give me back my word. We got to stop going around these cycles and acting like you don't know who your God is. God is a spirit. And your, 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 you should open up your mouth because when you begin to start speaking his word, he shows up. Just like on this line, as I start praying, I feel his presence. You should feel his presence. So you got to get in the word and you got to know how to put the speak his word into your situation. It may not work right then, but you got to keep speaking it until it manifests. Be persistent. You got to know how to endure. You got to know how to endure heartache as a good soldier. He never told us it was going to be easy. You got to understand, you're going to go to some trials. You're going to go to some tribulations, but it can't kill you. Why? Because you speak it, it ain't going to kill you. No, I will not lose my mind. No, I'm not going to get corona. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to read the word of God. I'm going to trust God. God, I'm going to praise him. You do what you want to do. Stop thinking that you don't have to do anything. You got to do more than just go to church. You got to do more than just say, I read the word. You got to, you got to become the church. You the pastor of this church and we got to do better. This is a place where we got to be at a place where we're constantly repenting. God, forgive me. Forgive me because I have not been doing what I needed to do. Forgive me, Lord, for I had my eyes on man and not on you. 
This is where you begin to say, God, I need you to help me. These things that I've been struggling with, I need you to heal me. See, this is where you having a heart to heart talk with God like I'm talking to you. Because the same thing I'm telling you, this is what I had to do. That's why it's called deliver me from me. I had to own up that I got some issues. I had to own up that I hated myself. And God saying, you hating you, but I live within you, so you got a problem with me. I had to tell him, I'm sick in my mind. I had to tell him, take them thoughts of my mind where I've been listening to what people told me. God, help me to, to, to forgive these people that spoke this stuff in my mind. Help me to let it go. See, that's what this is about. It's where I'm owning up to my issues. I ain't looking at nobody else. I'm focusing on myself because God lives within me. And I know if he going to live in me, I got to take care of this church. We got to repent for how we've been taking care of our bodies. We're doing something in it, everything. This is your temple. You got to repent. The Bible say in 1 Corinthians in the 6th chapter, he said, if you become one with a prostitute, you become a prostitute. We got to repent. We overindulging. We doing all kind of crazy stuff. Lord, take the nicotine out of my mouth. Take this drinking out of my mouth. Take want to do this drugs out of my mouth. Me want to have sex. I need you to take it out of me. Deliver me. You got to begin to say, Lord, help me. No man or no woman can't fulfill me. You got to be honest with yourself. Lord, I need your help. This is when I'm not trying to condemn nobody. I'm trying to help. This is where you got to ask God to help you. Because he's saying, you call upon me, I will answer. And that's what this is about. Being there with you so you don't have to be by yourself. That I'm here to walk with you. As God is doing the work in you, he's doing the work in me. And we're making progress together because we need each other. But we in the body, we got to start teaching the people how to learn the principles of the Lord and stop doing it for them and teaching you, you got to repent for your life. Because if you don't like the way your life is, you got to change. God is just not going to change anything. You got to make better choices. You got to think differently. You can't think things are just going to turn around and you keep spending all your money. No, you got to learn how to be a good steward of your money. You can't be a frivolous spinner. You got to work the principles of the word of God. Stop being a user. Lord, forgive me for using people. That's right. Lord, get my church in order. Because a lot of times it's easy for us to find fault. And God saying, let's deal with the person who you look at every day. Ask him, Lord, help me to deal with me. Because I found out in the body, we don't want to be honest with ourselves, people of God. We got, it's okay. Tell me everybody is going through something. Everybody is. Ain't nobody like they got it together. This is what, but we need each other to say, help me to show me how to walk and get free. Show me how to change the way that I'm thinking. Show me how to cry out to the Lord. That's what this is about. So your life can be better. Because if not, you're going to keep going through these same cycles. Your children looking at you and you showing them how to go through them same cycles. And God said, enough is enough. You got to fight for you. So I pray that it's something that, that the Lord has ministered to you. I pray that something broke off of you. I pray that the Lord spoke to you. And I pray that he began to, to do a work on the inside of you. And that you give God permission to deal with you. He'll deal with you. Can I tell you, he's a gentleman. God is no judge, no, no big judge when I'm going to kill you. No, he loves you. And if you ask him for help, help me to come out of this. Help me to leave this person alone. Help me to stop drinking. Help me to stop sexing and doing all this crazy stuff. I promise you. He will help you. But the Bible says you have not because you ask not. So as we get off the line, ask him. Just because I stopped praying, that don't mean you got to stop. My assignment, I completed my assignment. He told me, get up there and pray with my people. I did my part. Now you now, you go and finish it off. 
So I pray that the blessings of the Lord be upon you, and I will see you all next Saturday at three p uh, at three. I mean at three a.m. And I pray that the Lord blesses you all. I bind up every spirit of backlash, retaliation, and revenge. And Father, I ask you to cover your people with the blood of Jesus. I release Psalm ninety-one in Jesus' name. Amen. You all be you all be safe.